All right. Hello. Uh, I'm going to demo the process of uh, having an online auction and also having an in-person component to that. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to auction off uh, my microphone, my keyboard, and my computer mouse. Um, so the online auction has already started. Um, I've got a, a screen share going so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, uh, I've already got the auction going. There's There's been some bids. We've got some prices on these different things. My mouse is going for $6. Uh, the online auction started about a week ago. Uh, now it's going, now we're the night of, and we're going to uh, uh, have some people come in person and also bid on these items. Uh, so the main thing to know here is that the auction is happening online. The the website has the final say, uh, and anything on paper is just uh, making it easier for people to engage with the online auction. Uh, so when the auction closes, when the website closes the auction, um, that's it. The website determines who wins. Um, the paper is just a way of... Uh, it's just an old-fashioned... I don't know, not old-fashioned... Uh, the paper is synchronized to what's happening online, but what's happening online is the is the authority. Uh, so uh, to start off, so to start off, I'm just going to um, bidding has already happened uh, online, so I just need to make sure that whatever paper I'm using um, reflects that. Uh, so the your bread and butter is going to be. Uh, this particular page here. If I just if I'm logged in and I click up in the corner, uh, I go to enter bids manually, and that takes me here. Um, you can have several people running this particular page. If you're logged in as a staff member, um, it should work for you. So let me know. Uh, you can you can log in into multiple devices and have different people. Uh, operating this screen. Uh, you might need, you probably want more than one person with access to this screen so that they can uh, update the paper copies. So I'm going to lay out my paper copies. I'll have a piece of paper here for the mouse. I'll call it mouse and the mouse is lot number uh, number seven. Lot numbers can come in handy. The website gave you your lot numbers. Um, I got the keyboard. And it is lot number uh, no, number eight, and the microphone is lot number nine. All right. Now, uh, going again by this uh, sheet here, the the whole idea is to keep the paper synchronized with what's happening online. Uh, so, when someone writes a bid on the paper, we need to punch it into the website. And likewise, when a bid happens online, we need to update the paper. Um, so when we're first starting off, we can start by doing that. So we've got this online to paper section, uh, and we can just work our way through that. Um, so we can see that Aaron Mader bid $6 for the mess. So we can use that as our starting bid here. We can say uh, $6, um, Aaron Test. And great, that's that's done. I'm going to add a little asterisk next to that on the paper so that I know I have uh, that that I manually updated this. So I'm going to add a little check mark or an asterisk or something, um, and then I'm going to check off that I've written this bid to the paper. Um, all that does is help keep this list small. So this these green boxes are kind of like your to-do list. Um, uh, it's nice and clear what you need to do, what papers you need to update. Uh, so next I can see I need to update my keyboard. Um, Aaron Test bid 21, so I'll put $21. Aaron Test, and I'll put another little asterisk next to that. And then I'll check that one off. Uh, last, I got the microphone, $31 to Jack Handy. So 
So thirty-one dollars. Jack. Handy. All right. Put a little asterisk next to that, and I'll check that off. Great. Now the papers have a perfect reflection of what's online. If someone walks up to the piece of paper, they know what the current bid is for that. Um, wonderful. If someone else bids online, uh, I can go ahead and make that happen. Uh, Jack Handy is going to bid $10 for the mouse. So now if I just refresh my, my manual bid page here, I can see that Jack Handy bid, but Aaron uh, outbid him. Uh, so now, yeah, so this is the new online update. Um, if there's a bunch of activity, you'll just need to update the most recent, uh, the most recent bid. So I can see now here I've got $10 for the mouse, um, and it's also still Aaron Test. Um, so I'll put a little check mark there. Jack Handy bid ten bucks, and then Aaron had already bid ten bucks first. Um, so I'll check that off. Great. Um, now let's introduce a new player. Let's say that uh, uh, we'll call him Bob. Really wants the keyboard. Bob knows that that's a hundred dollar keyboard. Uh, so he's going to come up and bid fifty dollars. Let's say so fifty dollars uh, for Bob. Now, he came up and did that. Um, the website has no idea. All, the only source of truth is that uh, Bob wrote this on the piece of paper. Um, so it'll be your job to make sure that that paper entry um, gets online. And to do that, you can go over here to the paper to online section. Uh, so you on the night will be walking around you can this page works just fine on a cell phone doesn't have to be a laptop like I'm using now um, we used iPads when we did it with Hanover uh, worked really well um, so you need someone to be walking around looking for entries on your paper that don't have an asterisk don't have a, a check mark next to them so Bob just wrote down his number and there's no asterisk. So that's a nice clear indication. Um, of course, you probably can't see that. Um, whoop, there we go. Uh, we can see that uh, there's no asterisk over here. Uh, so we just need to update that. Uh, so someone's walking around reviewing the items, just looking for those asterisks. And we see, oh, there's something new. I just need to enter that online. So I'm going to go to item number eight. Uh, I might type it, maybe this is a keyboard, uh, or I just type the number 8. In any case, I select the item. Uh, better name is Bob, he's new. Um, I can just type in something new, and Bob bid 50. Great. Uh, now, I've entered that online, I'll just put a little asterisk next to it here. Um, let's, uh, let's do one more. Sometimes, um, let's say, let's have someone bid on the microphone. Um, Bob will also walk up to the microphone and Bob will bid uh, $35. He's not feeling as, uh, <laughs> as generous with the, with the microphone. Um, so Bob bids 35 on the microphone. Uh, so now uh, you or one of your runners goes around, spots that new bid, comes in here and enters it uh, into the website. Um, so I'm going to pick the microphone, again this is Bob, here you go, he's already in there, uh, and he's going to bid $35 for the microphone. Great, that's recorded, I can put an asterisk next to that, uh, and that's not quite done. So it's done, you haven't done anything wrong, you'll notice that there is now a new online to paper. Uh, so Bob made a bid, uh, Jack Handy immediately uh, outbid him. Um, so you've got a paper update to make. So we go, whoop, uh, go back to that microphone and we can see that Jack Handy has bid 36. So I'll update the paper for that. Uh, Jack Handy bid $36 and I'll check that off. So great. Um, it is a good idea or it's, it's helpful if you have really quick runners to pretty much um, 
try and uh, when some, when you see someone writing on a piece of paper, putting a bid down, um, you know, try and catch them and and you know say, hey, hold on a second, let me just punch that in online, because uh, that does happen pretty often, or it did for us in Hanover, where someone would write down a bid, um, and then a second later they were outbid, but they didn't know it, uh, so they would go around and think they had the winning bid on that for a while. Um, so we had a, a couple times where it was a, a really desirable item uh, where we just said, all right, Stan, just stay here for a sec. Uh, and so they could they could see that, oh, you know, Bob could see I was immediately outbid. Uh, and then Bob looks at this microphone. Uh, maybe he reads a bit more of the description and realizes, hey, that's actually, a, I forget what that is, a $80 microphone. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll go up to 50. Um, so then... Uh, sometimes these interactions happen in more uh, real time, more back and forth. Uh, so let's say that happens. Let's say Bob suddenly feels very generous. He's going to bid two hundred dollars for that microphone. Um, so he writes it down. We'll, we'll punch it in online here. We'll say the microphone. Uh, and Bob, pardon me. And he's going to bid two hundred dollars. All right. There we go. There's no green box here, so we can say, all right, Bob, the microphone is yours um, for $200. For now, at least, we'll see if he gets outbid. Um, likewise, if there's more online activity, you'll see more green boxes uh, appear here for us to do. Uh, we might have to refresh this screen. Um, for Hanover, we ended up having some runners just going around um, looking for new bids on the paper uh, and other runners just went around just doing the green boxes um, so if something happened online they would just go update the paper with what happened online um, and uh, and yeah they're they're depending how things are going hopefully the online activity has kind of slowed down um, because every online bid needs to go down on the piece of paper. So that can become, we had a couple items that were very active. Um, so they just had a lot of uh, online, or a lot of our paper entries were because of online activity, even though no one was actually uh, writing on that piece of paper in person. Um, but yeah, so so there's one other edge case here, which um, we'll I'll just uh, manufacture here for a second. Um, let's say I'm going to bid. Uh, I'll just set this up here. Um, so let's say I'm just going to refresh that page. Uh, I see a new bid for Jack Handy bids $11 for the mouse, so I'll go update that piece of paper, $11 for Jack Handy, and I'll check that off. I've updated the piece of paper. Now this happened at Hanover. Uh, someone walks up to the piece of paper and makes a bid, and it's matching an online max bid. Uh, so Bob is going to walk up uh, and he's going to offer $40 for the mouse. So he'll offer 40 uh, for Bob. Now, when I go punch it in, um, or I should say, when a runner comes around, sees that entry for Bob without an asterisk next to it, uh, they're going to punch that in online. So they're going to go, I'll pick the mouse, I'll pick Bob, uh, and I'll set 40. I'll enter that in. Uh, so great, Bob's. Bob's bid was logged. I can put a check mark there. Uh, now we see there's a new online activity, uh, and that online activity says that Jack bid forty dollars for the mouse. Um, so that happens because uh, Bob just matched uh, Jack's max maximum bid. Um, if we go over and look at the mouse page. Um, we can see uh, we can see in the bidding history here. Um, you'll see this where Bob bid 39 and then Jack auto bid 40. So this is yeah this is a kind of an edge case around maximum bids. Um, it happens online as well, um, where one person will set their max bid to 40 dollars, the next person bids 40, uh, and the first person to bid that amount 
has it at $40. Um, so when this happens, um, we can see we've got the green box here telling us that Jack Handy bid $40 for the mouse. When I go to write it down, there's already a $40 bid on the paper, but online is the source of truth. Uh, so what I did in Hanover, we would stroke out Bob, we would write $40 for Jack Handy, and then we would write in brackets, in tiny little letters, we would just explain this to the people in person, uh, and we would say that Jack's bid um, came in first. So let's just say Jack uh, bid online first. And we'll check that off, that I've updated that, uh, and I'll hit that green box. This did happen in Hanover on a couple occasions, um, and it wasn't too confusing. If you are next to the person who's bidding on paper, you can explain that, you know, hey, you're, you've reached Jack's maximum bid, so a couple more dollars and it's yours. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's an edge case that you'll run into. Uh, that's about it. When we get near the end of the auction, uh, we need to pull these papers before the auction ends online. Uh, and that's just to avoid race conditions where Bob runs up with 30 seconds left on the clock and Bob writes down, you know, $400 for the mouse. Uh, and we don't get a chance to put it online before the auction ends. And as we've covered, um, the online it's the website that is the source of truth. So if that bid doesn't end up online, then we're going to go ahead and tell someone else that they won the mess. Um, so in person, we give lots of warning. We say, hey, you know, you got five minutes left. You got one minute left. Uh, and okay, we're cleaning up the papers. And you're going to clean up the papers at least 10 minutes before, probably more like 15 minutes before the um, end of the auction. Uh, in Hanover, we ended up kind of running low on time, and so we went online and extended the auction online another 10 minutes, which wasn't ideal, but it saved us from anything blowing up in our faces. So we just went into the auction settings and adjusted the end time and added another 10 minutes. Uh, so we're going to clean up all the papers. Let's say Bob did sneak in there. At, you know, 10 minutes before the close, and uh, Bob bid, I don't know, $100 for the mouse. He's feeling very generous. Uh, no one saw it, so we're going to collect the papers, and while we collect the papers, we're still looking for anything without the asterisk, anything without that check mark. So I'll clean up the microphone. I can see we're all up to date there. This paper is basically garbage at this point. Um, this paper, yeah, we've got everything's current there. This paper has something we haven't processed yet. Um, so whoever's collecting the papers, watch out for that. Um, and you've got 10 minutes to put this in online. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say this is the, the mouse, the bidder is Bob, and the maximum bid is $100. Great, that's placed. If you do see any more online activity after we've collected the papers, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just gonna check off that I entered Bob's bid there. Uh, if we have some more green boxes, that's fine. That's um, activity is still happening online and activity can happen online up until the last second. Um, when the auction's over, uh, we will just pop over here. Um, and, uh, and go to view our end of auction report. Um, my auction hasn't actually ended yet, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, you see this nice warning. When the auction is actually over, that warning goes away. We can see exactly how much we raised, which is just kind of fun. Um, and in real life, this will be a much larger list. Uh, so we can search for a particular name, we can search for Bob, we can search for his invoice number. Um, so uh, when the auction ends, your in-person visitors are going to want to take home, are going to want to pay and take their stuff right away. Um, payment is something you're going to have to keep track of on your own, but you can still use this page to say, okay, what did Bob win um, uh, when Bob comes up? And we can, 
Uh, this did happen uh, uh, in Hanover, where Bob thought he won six things, but he was actually outbid on a number of those items at the last minute. Um, so, so he came to me. The, I'm looking at the website, and the website is the source of truth. So I tell Bob, well, you, you only got the mouse, um, and, uh, and you were outbid on those other things. Uh, so you only bought the mouse, uh, and you owe what, uh, $100. Uh, so great, I take Bob's payment for $100 and make sure he only leaves with the mouse, um, because those other items were claimed by someone else online. Uh, so this page is pretty handy for, um, yeah, getting kind of the total owing from people, um, and, uh, and, yeah, and closing up the auction that way. Um, yeah, I hope this is helpful. I'll cut it off here because I know I've been talking for a while. Uh, yeah, I hope this is helpful. Cheers.